Hey everybody, welcome to Root Beer Reviews with OmniDog. I'm your host, OmniDog. Today's root beer, IBC. And it's decent. I like it. It's made with cane sugar, which is good. That helps my teeth rot quicker. And from mass produced root beer, it's good. But some of you may be saying, OmniDog. Or about your doctor. I had a conversation with my doctor about my weight. And I said, what happens if I just leave the ice cream out of the root beer and not have a root beer float, but just have root beer? And he said, okay. So granted, this conversation took place in my head, but I it sounds like what a doctor would say if the doctor were me. So I'm going to go ahead and keep having root beer, and I'm sure I'm going to lose weight. I'm really sure of it. So today, we're going to review two books that deal with world building. And quite frankly, we're going to talk about one of the best books I have ever read. As far as world building goes, or anything. Lazarus. Whoop, let's see, can we get them both in there? Lazarus by Greg Rucka. With art. Fabulous art. Art and Letters by Michael Lark, Colors, Beautiful Colors, Santi Arcus, and then Publication Design and Additional Content, Eric Troutman. And I'll tell you why that's important coming up. But, in short, what's so great about Lazarus and what's it about? It's a dystopian future where there is no government. And let's see if I can show you. The world is divided up into corporate run territories there's no government this is set in the future not sure when exactly it's in the future he does have a timeline with birth dates and events and I really tried hard to figure out when this happens so there's two things either Greg Rucka is being purposely mysterious or Omni Dog is stupid so take a look for yourself judge for yourself Maybe you'll figure it out yourself. But here's how the world's carved up. And unfortunately, the United States is bifurcated by the page. But you can see right there, Carlisle has the majority. The Carlisle family has the majority there. And in red, I believe, is Hawk. Moray Corporation has South America, has uh, Mexico. And then you've got all the other countries divided up into corporations and companies they are the ones that run the world is that really such a far-fetched idea here in what year is this 2004 2017 not really i mean governments kind of do what businesses want them to do <laughs> so that's and don't leave any kind of comments about that that's just a fact so just relax but the families took over from the government in the future, and they run them. They run their territories. Um, the Carlisle family is one of the most powerful. Uh, and every family that has a territory, that can have one, has a Lazarus. And that is their defender. That is their genetically modified, bioengineered human that is considered part of the family and is a part of the family superior weapon skills and can regenerate based on an operating center back at headquarters Carlisle headquarters for our protagonist Lazarus her name is forever Carlisle you may have a problem with the name forever Carlisle that's too bad that's her name so deal with it so let's take a look at some of the art it's very cool. This is a family drama. It's got elements of corruption, incest, um, backstabbing, not being able to trust anybody. Kind of a soap opera. But it's also got forever kind of in love with the rival. I'm going to try and not give away too much because there's a certain viewer out there 
Pon Idol House, <laughs> who says I give too much away. So I won't. But I will say, there is an element of interest in here in that Forever has a thing for arrival uh, families Lazarus. So that gives it a little bit of a Shakespearean element to it. So not only do we have... It actually is a Shakespearean element to it because it's got ultimate tragedy in the family. No one being able to trust anyone. Everybody uh, looking out for themselves. The only one it seems we can trust is Forever. And while I can't tell you too much of what goes on, there's conflict with other families. And the Lazaruses are the ones who are generally sent to deal with it. There are peace talks, there's this, there's that. you got to read it. This is the most wonderful... Okay, that word's wonderful. Let me try it again. That... What was I going to say? It is the most wonderful world-building book I have ever read. Not only do you have to read... You know, obviously you're going to read want to read the book because it's great, but you absolutely have to go into the back matter of the book because the back matter will take you as long to read as the regular book, but it is critical because not only did Greg Rucka do biographies and lifelines on all the characters, but he drew a timeline that you have to look at. It makes complete sense when you look at this timeline and you have to read all the profiles of all these characters in it to really understand them. Um, I'm usually not a, somebody for extras. I'm like, eh, covers, sketches, whatever. This is not an extra. These are required. You have to read the extra part in this book to get the full experience of this incredible world building. And... In the second edition, let me show you how far the world building goes. Let me show you second edition, some art from the second edition. The color palette's muted in some places, bright in others, very effective. And let's see if we can hear some brightly colored, obvious, interesting artwork there. And I'll show you another little bit. Not only are we dealing with, look at this, we've got snow when they're battling. They all have armies, but they mostly rely on their Lazarus. But here's where, if you look at this carefully, you can see little computer pop-ups there, right? They've taken the time. Eric Trotman has taken the time to actually design every single computer sc screen and computer pop-up in this book. It is unbelievable. They've got media, com computer screens for rival gangs, sorry, ha! rival families, and they've got special signs that they've got, these are plastered all over the book. This is about as real a world building as you're going to get. They've even got fake ads that are in the book for these people. This is an incredible world building experience. You are immersed in a believable world because there is such attention to detail. The writing is impeccable. Greg Rucka nails it. And the art is great. The design is second to none. This is somebody that took a long time to design this world. You owe it to yourself. You, right there. No, not you. I'm not pointing to you. I'm talking to you. Owe it to yourself to read Lazarus. It is incredible. So far, there are two hardcover collections. That's what I've read. You can probably get um, a little bit more in trade paperback. You can probably follow a little bit along. Uh, I'm a trade waiter. I wait for the hardcovers, and that's just how I roll. Yo! But you can probably catch up and go even further than I did. 
um, because obviously book two left on a cliffhanger that I, that I want to know what was going on in. So that's our kind of on the radar book that lots of people know about. It's from Image and Image puts out tons of great books. Lots of people know Greg Ruck and Lazarus. So we've got a little bit of an under the radar book that I'd like to talk about and that is Invisible Republic. Invisible Republic. See if I can find them out. There they are. There's Invisible Republic. Um, Invisible Republic is a political thriller set in a science fiction setting. Um, it is also in a. Um, it's. I guess it's a dystopian future. It's a future where there's a planet out there with a couple of moons. And our story takes place on one of those moons. Earth doesn't really figure into it except for some minor government presence. So this must be a good ways in the future. Um, but it is a political science fiction thriller. So you need to like that kind of thing. Uh, the story in a nutshell is a journalist discovers the diary of the sister of the recently deposed dictator. And several people seem to be determined to not let the writer publish it. Excuse me. I need another hit of root beer. Mmm. Foamy. So I can't give too much away. The world building isn't ex as extensive as Rucka's. And there are an awful lot of characters to remember because it's told in flashback. You've got it in the present time that it's set in, and then there's flashback 30 years early when the diary was written. And fortunately, uh, the diary is fleshed out, but they're very short diary entries, so you don't get like a page long diary that you got to slog through. They're very short diary entries that make it very interesting to read what's going on in the past and how it impacts the future. Um, it's a kind of political thriller mystery uh, set, um, as I said, on those moons. Um, it, um, it can be a little difficult to keep track of everybody going back and forth in those flashbacks, as I said. So you need to exercise some patience because there's not a, um, a big thing like in Lazarus at the end telling you who's who. you got to figure it out as you go along. And I will say, um, Volume 3 ends on a cliffhanger. Big cliffhanger. So I will tell you that if you do decide to get this, wait until Volume 4. I regret not waiting until Volume 4 because now I'm stuck waiting for Volume 4. Um, the sister and her, the sister of the deposed dictator, and her diary are kind of the driving force behind the book. Um, you want to find out who she's writing the diary to, what it has to do with what happens in the future. Um, who are these people that don't want the the journalist to publish this book about the deposed dictator, um, and what exactly is the political import of these journal entries? Can they actually, these things from the past, affect what's happening in the future when the uh, journalist wants to publish the book? Now that sounds sort of dry. I'm not doing a good job explaining why it's fun. It is fun because it's very exciting. There's all kinds of um, government interference, of course, freaking government. Uh, police state type of things. There's um, there's underground resistance type of uh, in enforcement going along that may not want the book published. There's uh, a shadow puppet government that may not want the bush book published. The writers trying to get the book published, and uh, there's the moral question of should he publish a diary? Um, there are at least two or three really good twists in this book that make it worth buying. Um, I think this is also by Image. So I'm doing two Image books today. Um, this also is um, got a couple of twists in it that make it really worth buying where you go, whoa, I didn't 
I didn't actually see that coming. And it's got uh, the protagonist you care about is the sister and her diary because that's what keeps it interesting. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but I will say it, it while it is not as uh, epic a world building venture as Lazarus is, nothing could be. But this is an excellent political science fiction thriller mystery that keeps you guessing. And wait, I haven't even shown you any art. But I will show you art. So you can see what you're dealing with. It's got a little bit of a muted color palette also. And... It's very muted, as a matter of fact, because a lot of these things happen underground, like the underground resistance and things like that. Um, but it's well told, very interesting. If you decide to get it, I would wait until book four comes out and get all three books. All four, <laughs> all four books. So that's it for me invisible republic and lazarus two good books for your consideration and i appreciate you tuning in appreciate you watching appreciate your comments and i'm going to be giving away something for the 500 when i get a 500th subscriber i haven't figured it out yet but i'm going to give something away and i haven't figured out how i'm going to do it yet but i'm going to do it I know there's ways to do these things. I just haven't learned them yet. So thanks for tuning in and uh, keep watching the channel. Thank you very much.